In this video, we're going to see how we can differentiate the trigonometric functions from first principles. To do this, you need to think back to the work on differentiation from first principles and that formula that you learnt um, when we first did differentiation. Uh, the addition formula that we learnt in the advanced trigonometry unit and the small angle approximations that we learned around about the same time as we learned these. So we're going to use these to differentiate sine and cos. And then at the end of this video, uh, we'll talk about the other trigonometric functions. So first off, let's do sine. So starting with our formula, where our function is sine. So f dash x equals the limit as h tends towards zero of sine x plus h minus sine x all over h. So that's just replacing the f of x with sine. We are now going to use the addition formula to expand those brackets out. So I know that this will be equal to sine x cos h plus cos x sine h. Okay? It's just using this formula here to expand this out. Minus sine x all over h. Now what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find what happens to all of this as h tends towards zero. In order to do that, what I want to do is to try and group the h terms together. So I'm going to go through a few steps here, and it might seem like I'm almost unsimplifying this. I'm going to make it look more complicated in a minute, but it will all become clear why I'm doing that when I can actually apply this limit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group up the sign here and the sign there. Because to be perfectly honest, I'm not too bothered about the x terms, really. It's the h's that I'm interested in. It's the change that I'm interested in. Okay, so I've just moved that sine x here. Next, I'm going to factorise that sine x outside of this first term. Is that so taking the sine x from there leaves that taking the sine x from there leaves that okay right the next thing I'm going to do so at the moment I've got two terms that are being all divided by h and instead of writing that I'm going to split this up into two separate terms. Rather than having two terms on the top of a common denominator, I'm going to write this out as two separate fractions. So sine x cos h minus 1 all over h, so that's this, minus cos x sine h all over h. And I'm going to go one step further than that. I'm actually going to take this sine x outside here to write this as sine x multiplied by cos h minus 1 all over h plus cos x times sine h all over h. Remember what I said, I'm only interested in the h's to apply this limit. If you wanted to, you could actually have a 1 on the denominators there to make it a bit clearer that this is the same thing as this and this is the same thing as this therefore that's the same as that which is the same as that um, that might make it a bit clearer for you anyway I know these steps here might seem like I've taken something that was relatively simple and made it look complicated however the whole point of this is I've got my x bit separate now, and now I can just focus on the h's, so I can apply this limit. Right, so I'm going to apply the limit where h tends towards 0, so h becomes very small. That's where these guys come in. Because when the angles are very small, 
and you're in radians, we can use these approximations. So, let's consider each of these limits. So, <clears throat> let's consider the cos h minus 1 all over h. And let's think about this in the small angle approximation. So, we know the cos h can be approximated to 1 minus a half h squared. So that's this. Minus 1 all over h. Which will simplify because the 1 minus 1 will be 0. So we'd then just be left with minus a half h squared over h, which simplifies just to be minus a half h. Which then, in the limit, as h tends towards 0, if h tends towards 0, well then this whole thing will be 0. So this will tend towards 0 as the limit tends towards 0. So this is going to disappear in this limit. Over here, sine h over h, well, as a small angle approximation, sine h approximates to be h. So sine h is approximately equal to h over h, which is 1 which in the limit as h tends towards 0 will still be 1. So this limit becomes 1. So this tends towards 1 as h tends towards 0. I'm going to come back to these in a moment. So how do we use these here then? Well, in the limit as h tends towards 0, I'm going to end up with sine x. This tends towards 0. So sine x times 0 plus cos x times 1. Sine x times 0 is 0. Cos x times 1 is cos x. So sine differentiates to be cos. This is how we differentiate sine from first principles. You will need to be able to do this yourself, and you'll need to go through all of these steps. So make sure you're fully uh, clear on all of them. In fact, I'd suggest that you pause the video and try and do this yourself, um, and make sure you can do it, because this will be an exam question. In each of the practice papers I've seen, this is in the exam that you need to do. You will be given this. So a question might say, um, prove um, that uh, the derivative of sine is cos from first principles, you may assume this. So you don't need to do those extra steps where this becomes zero. You don't need to do those steps that I did um, if they give you this information. They might not give you that information um, and you might need to do it yourself like I did a few moments ago using the small angle approximation. But it's likely they give you this, and then you can just use that information here and here. But you will need to get to the point where you've got it looking like this. So sine differentiates to be cos. Um, let's, just, let's just have a look at what that look. Uh, I think about what that looks like graphically. What we're saying is the gradient of the sine graph is always the cos graph. And hopefully that makes sense. So let's look here. Um, well, at x is 0, well, the gradient of the line here 
Let's then think about what the gradient of the line is here, and here, and here. And think about what the gradient is at each of those points. Well, we can see actually the gradient here would be zero. The gradient here is zero, which makes sense because cosine is zero at pi over two, and cosine is zero at pi at three pi over two. The gradient here is 1, because cosine is 1 at 0. The gradient here is minus 1, because cosine is minus 1 at pi. And so on. So hopefully it makes sense graphically as well that the, uh, the gradient function of sine is cos. Um, in terms of differentiating cos, we would do exactly the same process. So I'll go through this. So we're now going to use cos here. So cos x plus h minus cos x all over h. We will now use the cos addition formula. So that is cos x cos h minus sine x sine h minus cos x from there all over h. Following the same steps that we did before, so just have a think back to what I did a moment ago. What was the next step after I did that? I grouped these together. So I would have cos x cos h minus cos x. The next step, again, think what that next step was. It was to factorise here. So cos x cos h minus 1. Okay, what's the next step after this? It is to split this fraction up into two separate fractions. So I would have cos x multiplied by cos h minus 1 all over h. So that is that. Minus sine x sine h all over h. Now I can apply the limit. Remember, I know that, uh, or uh, I showed it a few moments ago with the small angle approximations, or they might just tell us that this is going to be zero, and this is going to be one. So I can then say cos x times zero minus sine x times one. which will just leave with minus sine x. So when we differentiate cos, we get minus sine. So we know cos dif um, sine differentiates to cos, cos differentiates to minus sine. Now, you can differentiate tan from first principles. However, there is a much, much, much simpler way of doing it when we've learnt a bit more about differentiation, something called the quotient rule. So wait until we've, um, you can have a go at doing this tan one yourself if you like, or you can wait until we've done the quotient rule, um, or if you want to skip ahead, go and watch video nine now, um, and we'll see how to differentiate tan. Um, basically, the answer is sec squared. Um, so when you differentiate sine, you get cos. When you differentiate cos, you will get minus sine. When you differentiate tan, you will get sec squared. You can take my word for it for now, or watch the video nine, or you can come and ask me about how to differentiate from first principles. I'm happy to show you that. Um, and do just remember, whenever we are differentiating something, we also learn about integration, because if... Um, if we know that sine differentiates to cos, 
Therefore, I know that cos is going to different. Uh, cos is going to integrate to be sine. So I know cos is going to integrate to be sine. And similarly, if I know that cos is going to differentiate to minus sine, then I would know that minus sine integrates to be cos, or sine will integrate to be minus cos. And finally, if I know that tan differentiates to be sec, sec squared, I know sec squared integrates to be tan. The other trigonometric functions, because obviously all I've sh I'm showing you in detail in this video how we differentiate sine and cos and their results. And I've talked very briefly about this. I'm going to show you even, brief even more briefly the other trigonometric functions. In fact, I'm just going to tell you their results. You are given them on the formula sheet in the exam. So if differentiating sec, cot and cosec, you can see their results over there. Um, like I said, tan differentiates to be sec squared, sec differentiates to be sec times tan, cot differentiates to be minus cosec squared, cosec differentiates to be minus cosec times cot. Don't worry too much about the k on the inside there and the k at the front there. That's something to do with the chain rule that we'll cover in the next couple of videos. Um, but we'll do, all, we'll do these functions in video 10. Those are the results, though, when you're given, you're given them on the formula sheet. And also the um, inverse trigonometric functions, differentiating arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. Remember, these are the same thing as saying sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, same thing. Um, you are also given the derivatives of those on the formula sheet as well. They're actually in the further maths formula sheet. But you now you do need to know how you get these, and you'll learn that in video 13 if you want to jump ahead and see how to do that. Um, but there we go. That's how you differentiate sine and cos from first principles, and then all of the other trigonometric functions as well.